Hey Alpha Nurses, I'm Nurse Sandra from AlphaNurseGuy.com. This is NCLEX RN Review Lesson 3. We're going to be doing cardiovascular disorder questions. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok to get any updates. All links are in the description. With out of the way, let's get started. Question 1. A client admitted to the hospital with chest pain and a history of type 2 diabetes mellitus is scheduled for cardiac catheterization which medication would need to be withheld for 24 hours before the procedure and for 48 hours after the procedure. A. Glipizide B. Metformin C. Repaglinide D. Regular Insulin The correct answer is B. Metformin. Rationale, Metformin needs to be withheld 24 hours before and for 48 hours after cardiac catheterization because of the injection of contrast medium during the procedure. If the contrast medium affects kidney function, with metformin in the system, the client would be at increased risk for lactic acidosis. The medications in the remaining options do not need to be withheld 24 hours before and 48 hours after cardiac catheterization. Question 2. The nurse is reviewing an electrocardiogram rhythm strip. The P waves and QRS complexes are regular. The PR interval is 0.16 seconds and QRS complexes measure 0.06 seconds. The overall heart rate is 64 beats per minute. Which action should the nurse take? A. Check vital signs. B. Check laboratory test results. C. Notify the healthcare provider. D. Continue to monitor for any rhythm change. The correct answer is D. Continue to monitor for any rhythm change. Rationale Normal sinus rhythm is defined as a regular rhythm with an overall rate of 60 to 100 beats per minute. The PR and QRS measurements are normal, measuring between 0.12 and 0.20 seconds and 0.04 and 0.10 seconds, respectively. There are no irregularities in this rhythm currently, so there is no immediate need to check vital signs or laboratory results or to notify the healthcare provider. Therefore, the nurse would continue to monitor the client for any rhythm change. Question 3. A client is wearing a continuous cardiac monitor, which begins to sound its alarm. The nurse sees no electrocardiographic complexes on the screen. Which is the priority nursing action? A. Call a code. B. Call the healthcare provider. C. Check the client's status and lead placement. D. Press the recorder button on the electrocardiogram console. The correct answer is C. Check the client's status and lead placement. Rationale. Sudden loss of electrocardiographic complexes indicates ventricular asystole or possibly electrode displacement. Accurate assessment of the client and equipment is necessary to determine the cause and identify the appropriate intervention. The remaining options are secondary to client assessment. Question 4. The nurse is evaluating a client's response to cardioversion. Which assessment would be the priority? A. Blood pressure. B. Status of airway. C. Oxygen flow rate. D. Level of consciousness. The correct answer is B. Status of airway. Rationale Nursing responsibilities after cardioversion include maintenance of a patent airway first, and then oxygen administration, assessment of vital signs and level of consciousness, and dysrhythmia detection. Question 5. The nurse is caring for a client who has just had implantation of an automatic internal cardioverter defibrillator. The nurse should assess which item based on priority. A. Anxiety level of the client and family. B. Presence of a medic alert card for the client to carry. C. Knowledge of restrictions on post-discharge physical activity. D. Activation status of the device, heart rate cutoff, and number of shocks it is programmed to deliver. The correct answer is D, activation status of the device, heart rate cutoff, 
and number of shocks it is programmed to deliver. Rationale, the nurse who is caring for the client, after insertion of an automatic internal cardioverter defibrillator, needs to assess device settings, similar to after insertion of a permanent pacemaker. Specifically, the nurse needs to know whether the device is activated, the heart rate cutoff above which it will fire, and the number of shocks it is programmed to deliver. The remaining options are also nursing interventions but are not the priority. Question 6. A client's electrocardiogram strip shows atrial and ventricular rates of 110 beats per minute. The PR interval is 0.14 seconds, the QRS complex measures 0.08 seconds, and the PP and RR intervals are regular. How should the nurse correctly interpret this rhythm? A. Sinus tachycardia. B. Sinus bradycardia. C. Sinus dysrhythmia. D. Normal sinus rhythm. The correct answer is A. Sinus tachycardia. Rationale Sinus tachycardia has the characteristics of normal sinus rhythm, including a regular PP interval and normal width PR and QRS intervals. The rate is the differentiating factor. In sinus tachycardia, the atrial and ventricular rates are greater than 100 beats per minute. Question 7. The nurse is assessing the neurovascular status of a client who returned to the surgical nursing unit four hours ago after undergoing aortoiliac bypass graft. The affected leg is warm and the nurse notes redness and edema. The pedal pulse is palpable and unchanged from admission. How should the nurse correctly interpret the client's neurovascular status? A. The neurovascular status is normal because of increased blood flow through the leg. B. The neurovascular status is moderately impaired and the surgeon should be called. C. The neurovascular status is slightly deteriorating and should be monitored for another hour. D. The neurovascular status is adequate from an arterial approach but venous complications are arising. The correct answer is A. The neurovascular status is normal because of increased blood flow through the leg. Rationale, an expected outcome of aortoiliac bypass graft surgery is warmth, redness, and edema in the surgical extremity because of increased blood flow. The remaining options are incorrect interpretations. Question 8. A client who had cardiac surgery 24 hours ago has had a urine output averaging 20 milliliters per hour for two hours. The client received a single bolus of 500 milliliters of intravenous fluid. Urine output for the subsequent hour was 25 milliliters. Daily laboratory results indicate that the blood urea nitrogen level is 45 milligrams per deciliter, and the serum creatinine level is 2.2 milligrams per deciliter. The nurse would anticipate that the client is at risk for which problem? A. Hypovolemia. B. Acute kidney injury. C. Glomerulonephritis. D. Urinary tract infection. The correct answer is B. Acute kidney injury. Rationale The client who undergoes cardiac surgery is at risk for renal injury from poor perfusion, hemolysis, low cardiac output, or vasopressor medication therapy. Renal injury is signaled by decreased urine output and increased blood urea nitrogen and creatinine levels. Normal reference levels are BUN, 10 through 20 mg per deciliter, and creatinine, male, 0.6 through 1.2 mg per deciliter, and female, 0.5 through 1.1 mg per deciliter. The client may need medications to increase renal perfusion and possibly could need peritoneal dialysis or hemodialysis. No data in the question indicate the presence of hypovolemia, glomerulonephritis, or urinary tract infection. That's all I have for this video. Please like, share, let me know if you have any questions. If not, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.